Today class, in this video, we are going to continue the discussion on the etiological factors. The summer heat syndrome. The summer heat syndrome is due to the summer heat. So the summer heat, as you, as you can see from the manifestations, some of the manifestations is very similar to the fire or the heat because the summer heat and the fire or heat have similar characteristics in this category but summer heat is very typical in terms of the season when does the summer heat happen the summer heat refers refers to pathogens that happens in the late summer or early autumn so that's this summer heat syndrome you have a very specific period of the year only from late summer until early autumn also the summer heat the characteristic of summer heat is part of the or similar to the heat and fire but it also has a characteristic, uh, characteristics of combination of the dampness. So when you see the manifestations, you will see some of the manifestations are similar to the heat. Some of them are similar to the dampness. The summer heat syndrome is a kind of manifestation, a kind of combination of the heat. Or the fire and the dampness happens in a certain period of late summer and or the early autumn. So let's see the manifestations. The patient may present with a feverish sensation, a heat sensation, sweating. That's because of the heat. The heat can cause the opening of the pores thirsty with a desire to drink because the characteristic of heat can consume the body fluid that's why the patient feels thirsty and prefer to drink hot, cold water so that's the characteristic of the heat general fatigue the patient feel fatigue from two reasons one is from the heat similar to the third heat. The reason is the heat. We have the, the heat or the fire. We have the characteristics of consuming qi. When the heat or the fire consume the, the qi, the patient will feel fatigue because of lack of qi. The general fatigue also can be result from the dampness. Because the dampness, the, pa the patient also will have blockage of the qi so the patient will feel fatigue the patient will have chest tightness heaviness of limbs so these are the characteristics of dampness yellow urine that's the heat the tongue is red is heat white or yellow coating why the, the yellow coating is heat the white yellow coating, white white coating. So the coating can be white or yellow. The yellow is easier to understand because of the heat, but why they will be white coating. So the reason will depend on the the volume of the dampness and the heat. Once dampness, once the heat, which one is dominant? If the dampness is dominant, in this patient, they got more dampness than the heat. This patient can present with white greasy coating or white watery coating because these two pathogens are opposite. The heat is a yang pathogen. The dampness is a yin pathogen. The pulse is soft and rapid. The patient may present with high-grade fever and collapse 
become unconscious. In this situation, why the patient will have collapsed and unconscious? Unconsciousness, the reason is from the exogenous pathogens going to attack the lung, attack the superficial body, and then from the lung, it change directly to the to the heart, develop to the heart. This is also similar to the example we talk about in the eight principles, the sun stroke. The sun stroke is from the summer heat. Why the patient will be unconsciousness? That's because it developed into the internal organs or already goes to the inter develop into an interior syndrome. So the heart has been affected, that's why it affects the consciousness. Some patients may present with uh, an upset stomach, vomiting, diarrhea, or poor appetite. This is because of the dampness affects the spleen and stomach function. So the patient can present with upset stomach, diarrhea, even vomiting or poor appetite. Or summer heat. The key point, firstly, it must happen in summer, in late summer or early autumn. So the period of the time is very important. The patient may present with fever, thirsty, sweating, fatigue. And yellow urine, these are the common symptoms of a summer heat syndrome. The next one is the dampness syndrome. The dampness syndrome is the, the cause of a dampness syndrome can be exogenous dampness. You also can be the abnormal metabolism of the water, abnormal water metabolism in the body. We can result in the pathogenic dampness. And the dampness will block the meridian, block the circulation of qi. That's why the patient can present with such as heaviness or distending feeling. So the manifestation, the patient may have feverish sensation, you know, sweat. Heaviness of the head, so a heavy sensation. Heaviness of the limbs, general discomfort and joints, soreness and pain. Why they will have sore or pains in the joints? That's because of the dampness affects the circulation of the meridian. Uh, the circulation of the qi in the meridian. When they block in the joints, the patient can present with the pain in the joints. The coating can be can be thin, white, slippery. The pulse is soft and moderate. Slippery indicates the dampness, white also dampness. These are some other Possible symptoms, that's in a damp symptoms. In a dampness is some syndrome, chest tightness, stomach acid, abdominal pain, bowel sounds, diarrhea. Most importantly, you need to combine with the manifestation of the tongue in order to, in order to diagnose a dampness syndrome. A dampness syndrome also may presents with chronic situation because the, that's the characteristic of dampness. So the two essential points of the dampness is heaviness, the kind of feeling heaviness, slow onset. So these two are very important. From the tongue, sometimes it's easier to identify from greasy, Tongue coating, it can be thick or firm. Either greasy or watery tongue coating, that can indicate the dampness. 
The dampness, the discomfort also can be aggravated by the humid environment or cloudy or rainy weather. So in this situation, in some very common situation, the patient will tell you that they are, especially for patients suffer from joint pain or some kind of arthritis from the Western medicine. This patient will tell you that they can predict the weather similar to the forecast, the, the forecasting from the, the, from the TV. Which means when they feel the, the joints pain become worse, it's going to rain in a few days. That's why they said they can forecast the, the weather. The reason is because this patient suffer from the dampness. And then the dampness causes the joint, joint pain and the weather. When the weather, the raining, raining weather, the humid in the environment increase. We increase the humid in the body and cause the pain in the joints that's aggravated by the humid environment. So that's the very typical symptoms of the dampness. The dryness. The dryness you can see from the manifestation. The dryness is a very kind of easier or more simple because the manifestation will closely around the dry, anything dry, dry also in other words mean of lack of body fluids, such as the patient can present with a phlegm, with a cough, but the phlegm is not a lot. The phlegm is very difficult to cough out because of dry. The nasal mucus, the patient may have new nasal mucus, but not so, also not a lot. The patient can have like some blood in the flat, also not, not a lot. So that's the dryness. The dryness presents on the skin. It can be the dryness on the skin. The patient can feel thirsty and feel dry felt. The patient may present with desire, a thirsty desire to drink, dry tongue, dry stool. Dry cough with a, with less or with very little phlegm. Scanty, scanty urine. So these are some of the common manifestations of a dry syndrome. So a dry syndrome, you can focus on the characteristic of dry. The dry characteristic can present all over the body, on the skin, and the manifestation such as the cracking, on the mouth, dry so, on the nose, less or scanty mucus, dry so. Um, there are also more all over the body dryness. When you when we see a patient present with the dryness. It also indicates us that the patient is lack of body fluid. So in the treatments, we can tonify the body fluid. The fire syndrome. The fire syndrome sometimes we also call it the heat syndrome. A heat syndrome, the cause can be exogenous fire or exogenous heat. The, the cause also can be from improper diet or emotional problem, such as the extreme emotional situation, such as excess or excessive anger, excessive sorrow, excessive sadness. So these kinds of extreme emotional conditions will cause stagnation. The stagnation also can result in a heat syndrome. The 
patient may present with either thirsty red complexion, constipation, or yellow urine. So these are the key manifestations of a heat or a fire syndrome. When we talk about the heat, fire, or even toxic, this all refers to a kind of heat syndrome. Where the only difference between these just how severe of the heat. So the the heat is the minimum fire. The fire is medium, and the a toxic. When we use the word toxic, it means that the patient suffer from extreme heat. So just describe the different volume of the the heat. The heat syndrome. The symptom we mentioned we have mentioned here is uh, more the excessive heat. The heat syndrome also can be caused by a deficiency, so such as indeficiency. Indeficiency can cause internal heat. This kind of heat is very different from these excessive heat. The reason is because excessive heat and deficiency heat due to indeficiency these two are in two categories one one is the excessive one is deficient so you can go back to the a principles uh, to, to read the com the differences between excessive and deficient such as the indeficiency heat heat the patient can present with such as chronic manifestation or mild fever instead of high grade fever and short course of the problem. The tongue, the color of the tongue can be red with dry yellow coating or burnt yellow coating. So these are all indicated heat condition. The dryness the dryness is because the heat will consume the water fluid. The pulse rapid, slippery, forceful. So they are, these are all the heat situation. Macular rashes or other rashes. Now you will see the skin disorders. If the patient presents with these kinds of tongue manifestations and pulse manifestations, we will diagnose into a heat or a fire syndrome for the skin disorder. And then the treatments will depend will be relieving the fire or relieving the heat. The key point is the avoid Fever, thirsty, constipation, yellow urine, red tongue, or even deep red tongue with yellow dry coating. The pulse is rapid and what and forceful. So these are the six exogenous path exogenous pathogens. Has no chi. Has chi. Pestinential qi is the one we called pestinential qi before. The characteristics is strong contagious abilities, sudden violent onset, rapid in progress, in progression and changes, high grade fever, thirsty, restless. So these are different characteristics of the pestinential Pestinential qi. qi also can present with the other manifestations due to it will, it will depend on the pestinential, the specific pestinential qi, which one is dominant in terms of the six exogenous pathogens. For instance, in one pestinential qi, it might be the more dampness. The other one, while well, the other one might be more fire. So this kinds of pestilential qi 
will present with different manifestations. Similar to the other information that we have studied, these six or seven, including the presidential qi, they also can happen in, in forms of combination. So in the practice, we also need to identify which one is dominant. Thank you for your attention.